So, they found it again, have they? I thought we'd taken care of it. The uh, forces of evil are persistent, sir. I'm getting too old for this. Who have we got lined up to deal with this problem? Uh, Murphy, sir. Oh, no, not Murphy. Afraid so, sir. What about Spade or Marlowe? Uh, dead, sir. Isn't there anyone else? Sorry, sir, he's next on the list. Well, I suppose we'll have to make do. Knowing Murphy, he's going to need help. A lot of help. I'll check the archives and get back to you, sir. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal, the redness and horror of blood. Five million souls drowning in gamma rays. Some lucky people have a natural immunity to genetic mutation caused by the radiation. I'm one of them. Most of them live in the new city, but I don't. I live among the unlucky souls, the mutants and the destitute and the wreckage of old San Francisco. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a private detective. Or at least I used to be. Since my marriage hit the rocks, I haven't done much of anything. I went out tonight for the first time in a week, but all I ended up doing was spending the last of my money on a bottle of cheap bourbon. Now it's past midnight, and I'm staring out of the window of my office on the second floor of the Ritz Hotel. Just like me, the Ritz used to be something. Now it's just another grimy building in a run-down part of town. And I'm almost out of bourbon. My God, Murphy, you look like hell. Really hit bottom, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I usually don't look this bad. I forgot to take my Geritol this morning. So, you want a drink? I saved my first one to have with you. No, thanks. I've been dry for eight years now. Yep, one morning I just looked in the mirror and decided I needed to make a few lifestyle changes. Quit smoking, quit drinking. Now I'm getting out of the business. Yep, I'm gonna move to the tropics and retire in a nice secluded island with a tribe of beautiful young women. You're getting out of the business? I guess that means the end of the world must be around the corner because you are the detective. I can't imagine you doing anything else, especially not running around an island with a bunch of nubile women in a loincloth. No, I can imagine it. I've been thinking about it for years now. Yeah. You know how it is. Lonely. 
Underappreciated. Dangerous. Ah, I'm not a decent night's sleep in 38 years. I tell you, I'm working on a case right now, and that's going to be my last one. Oh. Enough about me. How about you, Tex? How's life treating you? Bad as it looks? <laughs> well, it depends. What day is it anyway today? Saturday? Well, Saturdays aren't too bad. It's normally Thursday by the time I get really suicidal. So what is it you wanted? Just come by to sprinkle a little salt into the uh, open wounds of my pathetic life? No, 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 Tex, you got me all wrong. <laughs> no, just because you turned me in and got me suspended and humiliated me in front of my peers. You sold me out. But that's all in the past. See, I quit hating you for that weeks ago. Ah, like I said, I'll be leaving soon, and I didn't want to go with any loose ends dangling there to bother me in my golden years. <sighs> <laughs> hey, don't worry about me. When you tossed me out of the agency, it was the best thing that ever happened. Digging through dumpsters and sleeping in abandoned speeders. You helped me learn a great lesson. Because no matter how bad things are, they can always get worse. So what happened to you? I heard you were doing pretty well there for a while. Did I help a job on that Martian memorandum case? What's your problem? You one of those people who can't live with success? Huh? Well, I can live with it. I'm just afraid of commitment. Now you tell me something. Why wouldn't you talk to me 15 years ago? I was a stupid kid back then. Could have tried to understand why I told the ethics board what I did. I mean, I understand now that I was out of line and I made a mistake, but why'd you cut me off like that? Because apparently you never learned the first rule of a P.I. And never, ever betray your friends. Now, friendship goes beyond blood and race and politics. You gotta find out who your friends are, then you hold on to them. A precious commodity to people like me and you. Now listen, before I go, I came here with a warning. I heard your name mentioned in connection with a case that I'm working on, and you stay out of it. If you don't, somebody's going to find you floating in the bay with a hole in your head. I don't need any more strain on my conscience. You know, frankly, I'm pretty insulted. Because I'm a pretty damn good detective, and I can take care of myself, thank you. Let's remember what I said, Tex. Got no idea what kind of people we're dealing with here. Just keep out of my way. I'll send you a postcard. So last night, after 15 years, the Colonel walks into my office. Made me take a good hard look at myself. Maybe I have hit bottom, and maybe I do look like hell. Lord knows the only exercise I've had lately is tipping the bottle and flipping cards into my hat. I gotta find some work. Contrary to what the Colonel might think, I'm as good a detective as he ever was. Now I just gotta prove it. I'm gonna scare up a job today, even if it means finding somebody's lost puppy. The scotch guard that Rudy's upholstering service put on my office chairs will stand up to anything, and I ought to know. This pure mountain spring water is indispensable, literally. I'm out of paper cups. Fabulous Dior lamp. I bought it for 77 cents. World War IV. A dark and reactionary vision of the coming century by Rush Limbaugh III. Toxic Taste is a novel by Luigi Trundle, the only mutant popular enough to make the New York Times bestseller list. My phone had worked perfectly if it hadn't been disconnected. Ah, Sylvia, my ex-wife. 
Whenever I think things can't get any worse, I think about her and how she totally screwed up my life. She's a woman who loves a man, any man, any time. I'll never forget the day I came home early and caught her with the upholstery man. Oh, there you are. I just got done with the chair. I'll be sending the bill to your husband. Oh, Rudy. Let's not think about my husband right now. I was, I was watching you upholstery and you're so big and strong. Do you really think so? Well, yes. God, I've only known you for ten minutes and I feel like I've known you forever. Oh, yes, look. And look at this muscle. Oh. The way you hold me, Tex, Tex never held me like this. <clears throat> oh, kiss me, Rudy, and set my lips on fire. Okay. Oh, Tex, honey, I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Well, duh, obviously. Now I know why the Rotor Rooter man keeps calling and asking whether we need our plumbing checked. Well, I gotta admit, those chairs look pretty good. Uh, thanks. Listen, how about I don't charge you on the labor and we call it even? Fair enough. But from here on out, Rudy, customer servicing doesn't include my wife. See, honey? I saved you some money again. Aren't you happy? I married her for better or worse. Unfortunately, it never got any better. The dusty credenza I've got serves only one purpose, and that's to keep the dust off the floor. Well, that's not gonna work. Great-great-grandpa Murphy made it through the Depression by teaching cha-cha lessons to rich older women. He made thousands before the authorities found out he had no formal training. Well, since the building inspector has only one eye and no depth perception, the hotel manager painted fire extinguishers in all the apartments. It saved him a bundle. I call this painting, uh, The Big Spill. The stupid light switch is stuck in the on position. Could be worse, I guess. That's a perfect bed for a destitute PI. Small, lightweight, no sheets required. That hutch holds a life's worth of knickknacks, patty wax, and the world's largest piece of elbow macaroni. Another pile of garbage. There just aren't enough hours in the day. This piece of art is called Two Whales on a Bender. This one really isn't art, it's a placemat from Taco Bob's. The UI of U was the only place that would accept me. Half the course credit was earned by locating the university. Ah, I spent weeks earning this baby. Best 20 bucks I ever spent. Crimelink computer is the only valuable piece of equipment left in the office. By entering suspect information like height, weight, and hair color, I can access the suspect's personal files.
Gremlin Computer is the only... Oh, great. Another incoming message that won't print out. If I don't get a new fax machine, I'll be out of business. This cabinet is where my old successes go to die. My phonograph's an old family heirloom. I love to play the classics. Cool and the Gang, Peaches and Herb. pre-approved electronic shop credit card application addressed to the previous occupant. Just needs to be signed, stamped, and mailed. Hmm. All I've ever needed was a soft felt fedora, a well-tailored overcoat, and a comfy pair of sneakers. Some people know what they like and they stay with it. The air outside feels thick, like I'm breathing through a pair of dirty gym socks. It's a high radiation day, most everyone will be staying inside, but I need to hunt for some work. I always like to start the day with a traditional P.I. breakfast. Mmm, <coughs> that hits the spot. My trusty 31 lightning bolt speeder. I still regret not getting the sunroof option. Chelsea keeps a well-stocked selection of magazines. I wish I could afford to buy a couple. Life hasn't been the same since my True Detective subscription ran out. Chelsea's a hot little number. I hear she's a mutant, but it doesn't show. The only weird thing about her is she won't go out with me. Chelsea Bando's the kind that could hold her own with anyone, but she has a way of turning my knees to jelly. She's a mutant just like everyone else in this part of town, but she's a real beauty. Well, hello, stranger. Tell me, gorgeous, has the new True Detective come in yet? 
Yeah, but you gotta pay for it this time. Hey, when you finish a magazine, it is in no condition to sell. <laughs> You're a riot, Chelsea. You ought to be doing stand-up. No, 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 no. Look, I do enough stand-up work right here. So can I help you with something? Rook acts like a tough guy, but he's a softie. Just don't tell him that to his face. Oh, you know me, Tex. I'm just making ends meet. I love Louie, but his friendliness doesn't fool me. He's a sharp one. He knows everything that's going on in this neighborhood. Franny's a live wire. Either she or Sal is going to do time for killing the other one. I have never seen a couple fight like they do. Sal's a handful. He's a nice guy, but I don't know, I feel kind of naked when he gives me the eye. Luckily, Ardo seems to like me. I mean, if I were on his bad side, I'd be tempted to relocate. He could crush a Subaru with one hand. Wish I could help you there, Tex. This is the brand new electronic shop outlet, no pun intended. I won't be able to get inside the electronic shop until I get a membership card. These posters somehow survived the big war. They're bitter reminders of the past glory of this great city. These posters some. Well, this is a section of the Bay City Mirror. It's a weekly newsletter that covers local goings-on written by mutants for mutants. I'd subscribe if they had a comics page. Some of this devastation came from the Barney the Dinosaur Museum. No one was too upset when it became one of the first structures to get blasted in the war. Everyone refers to this stuff as Barney Rubble. Francesca Lucido makes the spiciest pizza in the city. The only thing spicier than her cooking is her imagination. 
And right now she seems to have a thing for me. Well, well, it's that a handsome P.I. Tex Murphy. <laughs> Have you come to take me away? How'd you guess? You must have seen my white horse hitched to the railing out front. Oh, my, Mr. Murphy. You certainly know how to excite a girl. Well, that's what I've been told. I almost got my own 900 number before getting into the P.I. biz. Well, I certainly would have subscribed. Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Sexy Voice? Rook is a tough old geezer. I've known him ever since we opened the slice of heaven back in the 32. But I can't say I know him very well. Chelsea is a nicer girl. Sal tries to flirt with her, but she doesn't give him the time of day. I like a Louis. He runs a nicer place, and I go over there and chat with him when the business is slow. Well, I was hoping you'd get around to asking about me. I'm just a lonely, hot-blooded woman who needs the love of a good, strong man. Me and Sal got married too young, and it's been up and down ever since. I've had enough of his drinking and the womanizing, and I divorce him in a second. But he's got a couple of buddies who are top lawyers. If I had some hard evidence of his screwing around, I could divorce him and get a decent settlement. Ardo is an overgrown kid. He comes in here for the all-you-can-eat buffet, and I've got to kick him out every time. If I didn't, he'd eat everything we got. Can't help you, Tex. That's that religion for norms only. It makes me sick. Sorry, I don't know anything about that. Surprisingly, the auto post box has no graffiti on it. Maybe people around here are finally starting to respect our government and its fine agencies. That old wooden fence blocks off the alley that runs beside Rook's pawn shop. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. He's a crusty old World War III vet with a face like a raisin and a tongue like a butcher's cleaver. What do you want, Miffy? Is this a bad time for a visit? That depends on whether you're here to help me or to irritate me. Well, I'd like to help you, but irritating you sounds like it'd be more fun. I could really use your help, Murphy. Last night, someone broke into my pawn shop. I don't usually have anything of great value, but yesterday I gave out a fair amount of cash for an extremely valuable diamond bracelet. How much is a fair amount of cash? In this case, eight thousand dollars. Boy, that's a lot of clams, Rook. Don't you think I know that? The bracelet was pawned by a young girl named Emma Nimpton. She said she hated to hawk a family heirloom, but had no choice. 
She said she would reclaim the bracelet in a month. Well, since the bracelet was worth ten times eight thousand I loaned her, it was a good deal for me. Did you get any other information from this Emma Nimpton? She left a phone number. I called her this morning, but the line is disconnected. So do you have any leads on recovering the bracelet? No, the police are a waste of time, and I can't afford to hire a decent P.I. Well, apparently you've forgotten that I'm a world-class P.I. I'd appreciate your help. I'm not a rich man, but if you find the bracelet, I'll owe you a few favors, which could come in handy. Come back here, and I'll show you where they broke in. Rook takes me out back and shows me where the burglar broke in. The back window is busted out and the latch is ripped. It's a sloppy job. As I start my investigation, I'm looking for information to enter into my crime link computer back at the office. One thing's for sure, Emma Nimpton won't be one of the suspect's names. Every P.I. worth his salt knows that's not my name spelled backwards. Another billboard advertising cosmetic surgery. It's big business these days. Mutants with money will pay anything to look like norms. Reminds me of playing hoops when I was younger, in the days before my lower vertebrae turned into petrified rock. Ten seconds left. Down by one. Murphy has the ball. He fakes. He drives. It's a 360! He's full! Whoever uses these garbage... The empty bottles of chocolate syrup lying all around this alley all look like they've been licked clean. Whatever's on the other end of this power box must be out of commission. The gauge is as dead as my love life. The empty bottles of chocolate syrup what all these garbage cans are doing around here. Maybe Ro I don't usually enjoy piles of garbage, but they do The texture of the pavement surface is a cross between a spilled coke and sandstone. Every time I see yellow-gray water oozing out of a gutter, I just can't help but thirst for a cup of coffee from the brew and stew. Whoa! This antique boombox worked. I bet it'd only play the Bee Gees. This old relic probably hasn't worked in years. Hey, there are batteries in here. I wonder if these still work. Mmm, tingly tongue. Still got juice. Oh, man! This dumpster smells like 20-year-old mayonnaise, and I ought to know. Well, I'll be darned. Except for the filth and stench, the interior isn't much different than the average studio apartment. In fact, it's nicely furnished. Someone's been living here, and I wonder if he saw anything.
Wow, a recyclable paper can. Finally, a glimmer of ecological responsibility. I didn't know Rook cared. Wow, a recyclable paper can. Wow. Looks like someone's back door opens onto the fire escape. Hey, this door's just painted on. Hey. So, Murphy, have you come up with anything yet? Well, it's hard to say, but I'll get back to you later. Coit Tower was once a majestic landmark. The wiener stand on the patio at the base of Coit Tower made the best chili dog in town. No one's here right now though, so I better check back later. Looks like someone's locked the door. Ardo Newpop is a gigantic goon who works at the front desk at the Golden Gate Motel. Ardo's no rocket scientist. In fact, he probably doesn't even know what a rocket scientist is. Anything good on the tube today? Uh-huh. I'm watching the Captain Wallaby show, and he's so funny. Captain Wallaby, your favorite show? It's my third favorite show. My favorite is the Inspector Burns Fire Safety Show. You know, Ardo, Inspector Burns and I are really good friends. You are? Wow! I'd do anything to meet Inspector Burns! Look, Ardo, if you'll answer some of my questions, I might bring Inspector Burns in to meet you. Would you like that? Okay. I can answer some questions, but first I have to put on my fire hat because Inspector Burns' fire safety show is going to be on pretty soon. I don't know what that is. I never heard nothing about that. I heard about that, but I don't know what a crusade is. I don't know what that is. I never heard nothing about that. 
I just want to be like my hero, Inspector Burns, because fire safety is very important. I don't know what that is. She's the lady who makes the best pizza. I eat at her pizza place all the time because I love it. He's a nice guy and I like to eat there because there's a TV. Ooh, Chelsea is pretty cool because she's got good magazines and stuff. That's where I bought my Inspector Burns Fire Safety Manual. I went to his pawn shop because I thought he would have Inspector Burns action figures, but he didn't, and I got mad at him, so he probably don't like me. Hmm, it's all locked up. The only way I'm gonna get inside is by using my innate cleverness or ingenuity, or maybe a key. Hi, Tex. How's the investigation going? Is there anything I can do to help? anything about that. Yeah, you know, I remember Rook told me about the burglary. You know, I remember a stranger hanging around the past couple of days. It might be a dead end, but I seem to remember that the guy had these bright green eyes and a tattoo of an anchor on his arm. 